Hello, everybody. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for the second event, Green Deal in the Art Field, here at the Levenboy Kunst. My name, my name is Jacqueline Ullmann. I'm the head of communication. Uh, it is very important for us here at Levenboy to um, urge uh, important discussions and create uh, networks about current topics as Green Deal. And therefore, um, we are very happy to, um, that Le Foyer has agreed to initiate, initiate two um, talks about Green Deal. Le Foyer, that's Yasmin Ashfa, Gabriel Schad, and Joya Del Molin. Thanks for really taking the time for such an important um, matter. And I um, also want to thank our guests for being here, for being abroad. It's a hybrid version, as I guess we'll, we are used now to have these kind of events. But I'm happy to see you all here. I hope for a stimulating discussion afterwards. And thanks again for joining us. Thank you, <laughs> Jacqueline. Thank you um, also for the invitation to do this uh, mini-series on Green Deal. We were already here two weeks ago discussing a bit the broader approach to the theme by um, looking at uh, questions around institution and organization in with regards to uh, um, environmental sustainability. And um, so we are kind of moving on today on the, on the subject and trying to be, become a bit more practical somehow today with our guests. Um, first, just a little word about Le Foyer for those who don't know it. It's a nomadic talk series. We go to different places in the art, like different places of production of art, to say in a broad sense, and discuss ongoing current um, processes in artistic or curatorial um, practices and, and production processes. And um, so the focus is on what's in the going, what is uh, not finished yet, so also uh, the focus on, on, on open ends somehow. Now the process we are discussing in this series, it's a huge one, it's a major one, it's, it's more or rather a transformation that goes through um, all fields and levels of society, politics, science, industry and so on, and the cultural sector or more precisely the art field that we are discussing is, is obviously one of them. And um, we thought that Löwenbräu is a good place to depart and because it's um, probably one of those places in Switzerland where art shows its most international side. And um, so we want to ask how or at all can the global art system be ecological and um, also how do we produce and communicate art in an environmentally friendly way. So today it will be, as I said, a bit really about the question of presentation and production and as a, like a main focus probably, um, the relationship between on the one hand side the, the currently like omnipresent preoccupation with environmental issues from an artistic or curatorial perspective and on the other hand side the mechanism of production and presentation of the resulting projects and how we deal with, um, to already quote one of our guests with this dilemma that um, cultural, this cultural sector or the art field um, um, it's, it's uh, confronted with, uh, this is something Stefan Charles will certainly also talk about, um, this dilemma because on the one hand it contributes to the discourse around environmental and climate action, but because of its own damaging climate footprint, it is itself part of the problem. So this will be a bit our focus. Um, I will quickly introduce our guests here and in Berlin and uh, afterwards hand over to everybody to give a short, short presentation um, related to the topic and to the projects everyone is working on or relates to this. So, Stefan Charles is a um, cultural and media manager based in Zurich. He is the initiator of the advocacy paper Green Museums Now. He will tell us about that later. And he's also the author of the policy paper The Cultural Climate Circle. 
Um, before that, he uh, held various positions in the cultural field. He was, amongst others, head of the culture department at SRF, the Swiss television, and uh, managing director of the Kunstmuseum Basel. Currently, he is researching at the Graduate Institute Geneva for an exec executive master in environmental governance and policy making. Pauline Gillier is an artist and filmmaker who joins us from Geneva tonight. She explores the links that humans create with their environment through stories, rituals, knowledge and images. She works with diverse material from documentary, fictional or theoretical origin. And she has um, shown her films and uh, installations in numerous art centers, museums and festivals. To name only one example, currently her work is included in the exhibition Critical Zones at uh, SECKHEIM as a project created amongst others by Bruno Latour. Um, and it's an exhibition and seminar and digital programs that has been going on for several months and will go on. And it is called a um, Gedankenausstellung, a thought exhibition, um, uh, with uh, focusing on the coexistence of all forms of life by um, proposing to imagine the Earth as a network of critical zones. This is probably one of those projects that are um, cultural projects that deals with an, uh, environmental questions on artistic level. So probably it's also one that we could discuss whether it also deals with it on an operational level. So, and um, last but not least, um, Thomas Oberender, um, joining us from Berlin. Tom, Dr. Thomas Oberender is a curator and author based in Berlin. He studied theatre studies and scenic writing and uh, worked as a freelance play playwriter, critique, essayist and publicist. Since 2012, he has been director of the Berliner Festspiele and artistic director of the Immersion Program, or the so-called Immersion Program, that he created in 2016. In this program, he devised new experimental experimental spaces between exhibition and performance. And he is the initiator and co-curator of Down to Earth. This is the project he will present us tonight and um, will be also a, another focus, um, which was an exhibition and a so-called unplugged program um, that took place in summer 2020 at Gropiusbau in Berlin. And it's a project that explored how a shift in climate policy affects our own operating system. And uh, with the leading question, how can we sustainably change the mode in which we work, eat, travel, or make exhibitions? So that's from my side. <laughs> I will go to the presentation and um, would ask Stefan to start. So give me a second. So I went to Geneva at the Graduate Institute uh, to study um, environmental sustainability for one year. That's an executive master. And I was concerning myself with uh, the situation in the cultural field, especially in Germany. So if you have questions, I'm very open to all your questions. In one paper, I focus on museums, and in the other one, I focus on all the cultural institutions. So you, whether you're from opera, theater, I'm open to these questions too, but I will focus a little bit on the museums first. Uh, why I was focusing on Germany is because um, when it comes to culture and becoming green, there is uh, a lot of talk <laughs> in Europe, uh, but there's not so much going on. There's a little bit more talk in Germany, and there's a little bit more going on. So maybe they're, they started a little earlier. I think we will follow in one or two years. It seemed to me a bit more, a bit more interesting to, to focus on the situation there. So what, what I found out, uh, we can go to the next. Um, when you look at a museum, there, there are so many things that are involved in, in, in a green museum. So this process, this is the building, is the heating, is climate, da 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 da, is the transport, is the flights of the curators and whatnot. So we have the situation here in Zurich where we just built this uh, wonderful Chipperfield building. But um, to be honest, um, this is not a green museum at all. Huh? Uh, so, <laughs> and I'm not sure 
you know, when it was planned and went through all these, I don't know, finance um, processes and, and political processes, nobody really thought of, is it, what is the main issue? With, should we not think about the future in a way of building a green museum? There's only one green museum in Germany, it's a Chocolat Museum in Köln. Uh, all 6,500 other museums are not green either. Um, so it doesn't seem such a big loss, but it's, it's a big problem because we have really to maybe from talking to go to the next level and, and act on it um, now to, 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 to make museums and to make the cultural um, institutions greener. Um, what I, when an when a, when a issue is as complicated as this, uh, and you don't know really where to start, and you're confused and whatnot. So I thought, okay, try to make the, the issue smaller and divide it in, 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 different, in, in different things. So yeah, we can, we can skip to the next. So there's obviously an efficiency issue, and I, I called it the efficiency goal, and that's, this was one of my findings. So museums should significantly reduce their energy consumption and purchase um, green electricity. This, this is one main issue. So that starts with the building, with the climate, and, and all these kind of things. And I made propositions on how to do that. Um, and, and the next, yes, um, was the um, ecology goal. So museums create climate neutral exhibitions and become climate neutral. So it's, it's, it's more about the day, day by day business. So what can you really do um, with, with your exhibitions to make them greener? We have green filming, for example. I produced with SRF the first green tartar. Uh, in filming, this is something that's really going on with exhibitions other than Thomas. There's not much going on out there. So we have to think about how to make the, just the day-by-day -day, uh, business, business greener. And the third, um, uh, yes, uh, is, is the, the engagement. Museums curate in environmentally sustainable ways and conceptually integrate education for sustainable development. This is something uh, I, I think Pauline will talk about because artists uh, and, and, and people involved in the art scene, they talk since 20, 30, or even, even longer about you know, nature, uh, sustainability, climate change, and whatnot. I found one of the main issues is, for example, in the, in the English language, um, Klima Schutz, uh, it's called climate action. So it's really something you have to do, you know, it's action. And, and Klima Schutz is more something you look at it and you expect it, it, you know, one day it's just there. So we have to get into this mode of clim climate action uh, right now. And I will talk a little more later, but I think for the beginning, uh, that's, that's the most important thing. What I then, with these goals, uh, uh, I um, created uh, three fields of action uh, um, based on these three. Um, E goals, efficiency, ecology, engagement. So what we can do with the energy consumption that we, at latest in 2030, that's about a little more than 3,000 days. It's not that long. Um, we should be, we sh the energy consumption sh should be drastically reduced. We should purchase 100% green electricity with the exhibitions and other processes. We have to become climate neutral. There is, for example, Tate, in England, or uh, Reina Sofia in uh, Madrid, uh, they openly announced that there will be climate neutral, so zero emissions by 2030. There's not one museum in Germany, not one museum in, in, uh, in Switzerland that has talked about that openly yet. And the engagement, of course, there are things like eco-curating or ESD, which is, which is basically uh, the 2030 agenda for, 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 um, uh, for learning and education. And there's, there's a lot going on with UNESCO right now. We should just link all these initiatives together. Um, we can, you can ask questions about it. So it's basically three things that I'm claiming here tonight uh, that we should do with the museums and the other cultural institutions. And yes, please, uh, Daniel Boyd said it 
probably best, more of less is more. Thank you. Thank you very much. I or we move on to Thomas Oberender. And you also tell me when I should go to the next slide. Yes, go please to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so as you saw, uh, the, the exhibition was a teamwork. Um, that's uh, what we all the time did in this series of exhibitions. Um, and uh, here you can see that uh, the unplugged idea was uh, stopped owned by the, mu the music industry from the 80s. So we thought um, we start a series of uh, projects in which we don't use any kind of electricity, for, for example. And uh, please next, um, the framework is um, that we um, produce this whole event in, the, in our exhibition hall as an artistic director of the Berliner Festspiele um, I'm responsible for two venues. One is a theater hall, one is an exhibition hall. The exhibition hall is the Martin Gropiusbau, and the artistic director of the Gropiusbau is uh, Stefanie Rosenthal. And she is very um, much aware from the beginning in 2018 uh, in her program uh, about uh, topics like uh, care, uh, rituals of healing. And uh, so this is deeply implemented in her artistic. Uh, um, program. In the same time, of course, uh, the immersion uh, program uh, that was uh, by Yasmin mentioned is a program in which we really try to go new ways in the understanding of what is an exhibition, uh, what could an exhibition be uh, on the border uh, of uh, exhibiting something and uh, in the same time using uh, the structure of theater to, to produce time-based events uh, in museums. So uh, the whole structure is time-based, not the content is uh, time-based. So this is significant for, for our work in the last years. And um, so it, um, this was the last production of this serial of exhibitions. Down to Earth was inspired. Um, we can go to the next uh, to the next slide. Uh, was inspired by a book of uh, Bruno Latour. It, everything started when I did read this uh, um, in German. The, the title is Das Terrestrische Manifest. Uh, the English title is Down to Earth, and I, I loved it immediately because usually, if you start to do something uh, to deal with climate change, uh, all the things become immediately negative and depressive. Um, very, very easily, but down to earth is not it, it's not this press uh, this much uh, um, uh, dark in the in the in the uh, let's say in the awareness of the topic. Uh, it's it's more something that is uh, uh, based in, in deeply based in life and uh, in something that may makes life uh, valuable, and so the. What we did is we created a kind of uh, organism um, that was in the middle of something you can call a festival and something you can call an exhibition. For the exhibition, it lasts very uh, short. For a festival, it lasts very long. Uh, altogether, uh, we produced a show with um, more than 200 women and male artists, and we prepared it for one and a half year. And it was a huge exhibition. Uh, so the whole project has three levels. One was um, the exhibition trail, with very famous and some not so famous, but very interesting uh, artists who are dealing with the subject of climate change and new new relation to other species. That what we call nature. It's a wrong word I learned, but uh, the environment. And second element was a kind of uh, structure built up by social modules. It was, uh, we collaborated with two academies, one from Paris. It's the Academy of Bruno Latour, founded by Bruno Latour, that was also, I think, involved by this, in this uh, critical zone project um, at ZKM. Uh, and uh, the, the third 
and the, se uh, the second um, academy was, for example, from Athens. It was an alternative autonomous uh, academy uh, um, run by an artist, Julia Strauss. And education is for her art form. And um, but we also collaborated with a lot of uh, um, community projects, uh, pioneers of environmental practices, of uh, transformative practices. We all, uh, all of these uh, um, workshops, uh, academies, and uh, lectures was uh, have been integrated in the exhibition work every day. Uh, and the third module was performative arts. So we invite uh, dancers, uh, um, theater productions, and uh, performances, and uh, music ensembles. And the special thing was, uh, next slide please, uh, that we um, we asked to uh, change some uh, some rules. And um, as you can see in this uh, slide, uh, for example, for the artworks of um, Andreas Gurski, we asked uh, for exhibition copies. Uh, so. Um, next slide, please. Um, you can see uh, we made in the beginning three clear decisions uh, to change the operating systems or the op operating system of our own exhibition making. First was no flights uh, in the period of preparation and uh, also uh, if we realized the project uh, for the curatorial team and all the uh, participators. Second was um, that we decided in the building of the Corpus Hall, in the first floor and the ground floor, no electricity uh, for the for everything. So this was really complicated because uh, all the artists we invited, the visual artists and the live art artists, um, couldn't use um, beamer microphones, loudspeakers, spotlight, nothing like this. So we invited them, and, and also we, we financed. Uh, to rework the works um, for unplugged versions. Um, and third, uh, we, uh, we, we started uh, a long and deep research uh, about our own infrastructure, the way how we um, uh, use electricity, what kind of electricity. I was the first time on the roof of the building to see the photovoltaic uh, installation and I was the first time in the cellar and I saw the uh, climate uh, and the air conditioning system and I learned everything about this and we asked about the experiences of our um, technicians and all the people who are really close to the subject. Next uh, please. Um, so we, um, we invited uh, artists like uh, Anduki Jordan to uh, to, to develop artworks for our program and uh, by using material from former productions. For example, you see this. Um, and uh, we invited also uh, people to stay longer as they do it usually uh, if they are involved in the program um, of festivals. Uh, please, the next slide. You see this was the book. Uh, with this book, everything started down to earth. And then you see the um, the students from Paris who give lectures and make also performances in the exhibition and every day around the clock and every day was something different. In the time of the exhibition they developed and prepared the next show and every day they opened this process of creation for people who ask and the questions and answers are um, a part of the creation of a new work. Um, and uh, so every day it was a kind of, it was in a way a different exhibition with different offers for the audience. And um, it was a completely analog feeling of welcoming the, the audience. You really did hear the orchestra music of analog instruments, classical instruments. And you saw everything. Um, made by people and for people in real time. Um, next slide, please. You can see uh, some examples for uh, what we changed in the way, uh, how we present our work, how we uh, realize our work. Um, 
just some examples that surprised myself the most. Uh, so I didn't know that color is so um, needs so much energy on our screen. So we decided to uh, to go for black and white. And then I learned that oil ink is not good because it's fossil. And we started to discover that there is a black algae uh, ink, uh, so algenfarbe. And we we asked the uh, uh, the printing house to uh, to order this kind of uh, ink, and then we learn how much trees we save by using this kind of ink. Uh, and we started to do that regularly now. For the publication, there was only one. We used um, old posters. Um, it's, a, it's the reuse of material that is um, stored in our uh, um, storage, uh, and uh, we can we can use it to make the cover from old posters, and uh, for example. And uh, of course, um, the most influential um, part is the climate system, uh, the, 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 the air conditioning system. And we learned that it's not so easy to, uh, to take it out. We, we changed all the contracts with the artists and the museums and so on, that we don't need to use uh, um, air conditioning, but in the end, uh, it's a topic for our discussion. I learned the system is stronger and older and uh, more um, <laughs> uh, established than all the attempts to, to change it uh, so fast. So next slide, please. You see, uh, in the exhibition, uh, we um, work with an artist like, for example, uh, um, like Asit Raza. He's recultivating uh, soil, and it's also interesting what happens if you bring uh, living material into museums and exhibition places, because usually you kill everything that is alive to to exhibit it. And um, yes, uh, and we gave it away the, 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 the soil to the, the visitors and also back to the place where it comes from. Um, next slide, please. Um, uh, you can see uh, that we uh, focus on artists who are international, but based in Berlin or at least uh, uh, Germany or Europe. Um, yeah, you see um, that we try to uh, avoid international uh, transports um, and uh, we uh, try to produce the artworks um, as much as possible in Berlin. Um, next slide, please. You see, this was a show by Francois Chaineau, a wonderful choreographer and dancer and great artist. And of course, he could not use electric uh, light, no spotlight, no colored light. So we designed colored curtains uh, on the south side of the building. Uh, we, we could use huge windows and then we use colored curtains to give him colored light for his show. So this blue is from a blue curtain and it worked and it was uh, wonderful. Yeah, and uh, you see, um, next slide, um, um, we learned about uh, our own routines, uh, the details of our own routines, and we try to change the, uh, the details of the routines in as much as possible to, uh, to change it. And in the end, you see, we also invited, for example, a ritual, uh, next slide please, uh, from Senegal. It's, um, it's a ritual of, for healing. And uh, we, in the beginning, we thought we have to bring uh, people from Dakar to Berlin, but then after kind of research, we learned that there are so many people from uh, uh, Senegal and Dakar living in Berlin that we could manage to reconstruct the ritual with people who are based in Berlin and they teach us a different relation to yeah, our understanding of what healing and what uh, medicine could be. Be. And this was, of course, uh, on the border of uh, something that is art, but it's not meant as art, but it's inviting everybody to participate in this healing process. And uh, yes, that's more or less the basic uh, information about the pro program. Last slide shows you how we created this kind of uh, uh, cover and 
all the facts. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will come back definitely to this exhibition, but um, first we move forward to Pauline. And we start with a little sequence of... Uh, is it okay to start with? Yeah. Yeah? With a little sequence or like the um, start of um, Naturalis Historia, the film um, Pauline will tell us a bit more later. Thanks for the invitation and so on, and, and I'm happy to discuss with, with you tonight. Uh, it's strange to see that right now because it was like uh, three years ago and it was before the pandemic situation and so on. And so maybe now we are more used to be stuck in situation because of natural reasons. But at that time it was kind of weird and, and I, I work a lot of describing this kind of situation uh, in front of climate change and in front of what nature is. Uh, so um, I start an investigation about, uh, about nature, representation, and how we as an occidental culture, we, we are considering nature as, a, as an object. We as a subject considering nature as, as uh, something we can look at and something we can study at and so on. And all this uh, this work begins with that landscape, which is actually a bit cropped, but um, which is the oldest landscape in the world. It's actually the representation of, it's an artistic representation made by the scientists of the oldest forest in the world, uh, which was uh, discovered uh, in northern China, you can skip, uh, by, by him, which is the Professor Wang. 
and it, the, the forest was discovered under a coal, open air coal mine. It was discovered fossil, fossilized, and you, you can switch to the next. So it's one of the fossils, but yeah, you don't see uh, that so well. It's like don't know why. It, it's yeah. Uh, so the, the fossils, they discovered the fossils, and from the fossils, they they go to the, to the landscape. Uh, and the, 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 this kind of landscape, which, uh, which was a landscape representing uh, a time where we, we as humans were not there, just stuck me and I decided to, to begin uh, an investigation about how we look at nature and how, as the, the prologue say a bit, as we consider nature as, as something extract from, from us. And this, this work brings me to several places and brings me to several thinkers also. Uh, and I work a bit with Bruno Latour, which was a uh, down-to-earth project also. And, and also with Philippe Descola, which is an anthropologist, a French one. And in the film and in the exhibition and also in the book, because the, this whole investigation is three forms. Uh, he explains that we are we are we only see what we are learn, we have learned to see. So we are seeing, for example, landscape in nature because we have learned to see landscape. And so, yeah, the whole whole idea of that is to reconsider a bit how how we look and how we we see nature. Uh, you can skip to the other one. So yeah, this <laughs> it's completely not the correct images, but never mind. Um, this whole uh, project was inspired by Pline L'Ancien, which is a, a scientist who at that time has written uh, Naturalis Historia, which is a big book, and, and he, he wanted at the time to, to do an inventory of the world, so to, to keep nature, to describe nature uh, as much as possible. And uh, this kind of, of move, uh, I wanted to, to underline and to, to analyze a bit. So I, you can skip to the other, yeah, maybe skip that because it's too, also that. <laughs> Oof, okay. So it's, um, that. it's a view of the exhibition I did in Centre Culturel Suisse in Paris. And you can see there is, so the, the, um, there is a lot of different stories, natural stories, and they are all uh, in different displays. So it's a bit spread in a space. And you can climb up uh, in this cabin, and you can see a three projector, 16 millimeter projection, and you can enter it to, into a stone to see a film and so on. So yeah, maybe... Um, I can speak about later on about the, the process and how, because it, it's a, an old work in a way. Uh, so it's four, four years ago now. And yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe okay. it's, it's all crop. Sorry so for the Yeah, that's in zoom. ZKM actually. So you can see here, but yeah, you, 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 you cannot see anything, so. It's like a close up. Maybe, yeah. So, um, yeah, but we are basically here to discuss, so I think we can continue here. I will stop the presentation. And um, so now we will soon, Thomas, we see Thomas soon again, I hope. Hmm. I can see you. You but, can um, see me. Okay. I can, we will. I can see me in a tiny window, but uh, I see the blue screen. <laughs> Good. On your side. So, um, thank you very much for the very different presentations. Also, I think it's a very good starting point to have them in in mind. Also to have a bit of an idea of where you are coming from and hopefully everybody has an idea why you are invited tonight. <laughs> so uh, I think it's a, it's a very nice mixture. I would like to start with like just very co small questions to each of you. Um, the questions that come up for me now seeing your presentations or also like in the preparation. Um, Stefan, 
it's a bit of a personal question, but I was very kind of um, impressed or surprised also by that kind of change also you you um, did by or the decision that you undertook to leave like the the, the positions you had. You were a um, very active um, person in the like the producing in the, in the art context, um, managing director at, at Kunstmuseum Basel at uh, SRF. So, what what was the or the, what made you um, change this direction and um, yeah, just go on a, on a very different um, path and focus on on um, environmental sustainability also f from from a research perspective mm -hmm. and also like yeah change this focus and change the direction? It's, it's very, very simple. So there was a survey on SRF uh, and they asked the Swiss public uh, what they think is what are the, the, the most pressing, the most important issues um, uh, SRF should, should talk about. And there was, number one was basically uh, international politics and there was national and, and local politics. And I think number three was um, climate change and nature and, and environment. And I then started to, you know, uh, work with, with my team. Um, that was my science team. And we wanted to start new shows about, about thank you, about uh, climate change and everything. You know the discussion that goes on in Germany right now, uh, Klima vor Acht. So instead of talking, um, every night about financials, <laughs> they want to talk about the climate every day. And I think that's, you know, there is something going on right now, so we have really to take action. And that, I thought running, running a cultural institu uh, institution or, or a department as, uh, at SRF, you only know so little about it. Actually, you know not more than anybody else, but you have to lead a company, you have to, you know, you have to set an example, and I thought, I have to go and study sustainability. I have to do the work first to, uh, to, 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 to know better and to know what to do. And that's, that's what I basically did. And I, as Thomas said, and I find it very interesting, you know, environment and environmental sustainability is a non-fun topic. It's annoying. It's annoying as hell because it is, you know, it's not not much to win. We all know we have to do it, but it's 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 a pain, you know. It's a long term goal. We don't see results right away. We have to work hard to get there, and uh, it's 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 really no fun. I, uh, you know. Whatever you do in the arts, usually you have a new show coming up or a new exhibition, and there's a lot of about, about presentation to to the audience and whatnot. And it has a lot to do with fun, and this is something that is really draining. Mm. But we have to change it in something positive because we have to do it anyway, you know. And mm -hmm. then, and it's time. That's just how I see it, you know. And I wanted maybe the first time in my life not just talk about things, <laughs> actually do something. Mm -hmm. And I have to be honest, I'm not the guy who collects uh, coffee around decally and, 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 you know, I, I'm not that type of guy, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Thomas, I, will, uh, I would like to just follow on this um, about the question with, like, what is the fun part, what is the challenging part? So let's first speak also about the challenging part because these are the the um, the things you also faced in 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 doing this exhibition. You just briefly men mentioned that, like this um, turning down the air condition was a was a tough thing to realize. So when you look back, what was, from your perspective, the, the most difficult thing or the like, let's say the the most um, challenges. Um, um, Partners um, to to persuade and to to um, yeah to persuade to to follow this this um, project and to do this show without transport, without air conditioning, without like the normal um, art institutions procedures. Uh, to start with a positive um, experience is that everybody was willing and immediately um, convinced 
that it's nice and urgent uh, to join into this change process. So um, basically the artists, uh, but also the galleries, and very often also the head of institutions uh, who have been invited to join the project, uh, immediately said, oh, wow, this is new, this is interesting, okay, let's try it. And so this, this was a very good uh, experience that, uh, um, honestly, it was not that hard to convince anybody. Uh, it was easy. Uh, on the next level, um, we understood that climate, for us, from the perspective of the immersion project, uh, the biggest immersive system is climate, the climate. Uh, it's nothing you can stand opposite of it. It's always what we do is influential for the, the climate and the climate is influential for our behavior and our environment and our way of life and so on. So it's not possible to, to divide it. And in the same way, we discovered that um, the system of producing and also consuming uh, um, exhibitions is also complicated and not easy to stand to go out of it. Um, so, uh, as a single um, position. So, I think it was for my colleagues very tough to uh, negotiate new ways of contracts for insurance. Uh, and it was not easy to, let's say, to synchronize the processes uh, that are parallel in the same building on several floors. Uh, so in the first floor there was another exhibition and the second floor there was also another exhibition with different kind of um, appointments with institutions and artists and um, insurance companies. So uh, we learned that the air conditioning system of the ground floor was not independent from the second floor or the first floor. So we, uh, we, we understood that the problem is a systemic problem on this level, but also on the level of, as a single institution or player, it's very hard to um, questioning the basic rules like uh, 20 degrees uh, temperature and 50% uh, of humidity. humidity. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that is a kind of iron law in institutions like ours. Mm -hmm. And um, this is really not easy to overcome uh, on the long run. Mm -hmm. So um, for those, um, I think we have to work together to change this. Yeah. And we need new partners for that. Mm -hmm. And do, does it change something after that? In the yeah. In our institution or? Yeah. Yeah, for example, yes, uh, if, if we think about a, a rebuilding of the, the Gropius Bar, big renovation in the next years, we started to think about the new way of, um, let's say, construction of the building itself on the next level. We think uh, we can avoid, uh, for example, concrete. We can um, uh, also start to integrate uh, uh, several zones in the building who are independent and th th don't have the infrastructure of air conditioning systems. And this will have an impact of the way how we create and uh, create exhibitions in the building. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a very, um, it's something that we learned from the process. And in the beginning you say, okay, yes, uh, we, have, we need more advanced uh, air conditioning systems. And then you realize, no. We can force ourselves uh, or oblige ourselves as an institution to think about um, different type of artworks who not necessarily need air conditioning. Stefan wanted to you know this, comment on it's this. It's very interesting because this climate restrictions in museums, I had to deal with that too. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's, it's not a law. It's an agreement amongst museum people by Bizot Group or ICOM. So it's not even science-based. It's just an agreement. You can change it. You know, it's, it's very crazy. If you really dig deeper, there's nothing written about it. There's no law about it. Actually, if Bizot or ICOM <laughs> would decide to change it, you can do that. 
There's nobody stopping you. And that's the crazy thing about it. Every, everybody thinks, okay, that's, that's the, you know, it, 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 it's something we have to follow by the letter, but we don't. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, for those who are familiar with um, like the bit how the museums work, there is this uh, strange thing of a climate curve, <laughs> which needs to be constant. So you are also not allowed to switch off or change something in the air conditioning and in the temperature, even though you're doing like a performance show, because otherwise you won't get your um, but, precious... But, you know, uh, but it was not thing. the insurance companies no. in the first place. It was the museums, you know, and that's the crazy thing mm -hmm. about it, you know. Because the insurance companies, how would they know, you know? Mm -hmm. They just follow the uh, museum's rules, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then, then there's this precious thing of this climate curve, which uh, conservators think yeah, they ha it has to be stable and this is something we want to present. So, yeah, it just kind of established itself as a, as a, as a thing. So... Um, Pauline, also, it's a bit going into a different direction, but because you are definitely somebody who has been dealing with these topics for a very long time. <laughs> and now um, things changed, obviously, and we have this, um, this yeah, I, I think we can say this omnipresence of uh, exhibitions and artists who are dealing with um, environmental questions, which is definitely important. But I was wondering, how is it for you who have been who has been um, engaging with these topics and also researching and going really also into the, the scientific aspects of it, in the theoretical aspects of it. How is it for you to, to now see this development <coughs> and um, yeah, then being popping up this exhibition everywhere and also of course taking part? So and probably the other question, did this attention for these topics, did this also kind of influence the way you work or does it did it change something yeah i guess we were speaking about that just before uh, the um, the more we we speak about it the more there is exhibition and action around i don't know exactly but this topic i mean that we are living in the in the climatic situation which is kind of no, we, we cannot avoid it, so um, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the fact that I'm working on that since a long time, uh, I don't know how I see the, the, the thing. I, I saw lots of beautiful exhibitions, I saw also lots of discourse, and sometimes for me it's, it's only words, and so I don't know, I'm curious about how it will take place maybe in, we will see in the future, and, and I don't know. For, for myself, I'm trying maybe to to be a bit out of that. We can just continue yeah. speaking. Yeah. It will come back. Or you take this? Yeah, I don't know if. Uh, I don't know. I don't like the the fashion topics, so I'm just trying to to be a, a bit outside of this this mega uh, i don't know analyze of something that i'm i think i have just something to say about description of how where we are and how we can deal with that but i'm not ne neither an acting or me in the acting part of how, how what could we do i mean in the artistic part so I, i'm quite yeah, I don't know. I, I have the feeling also that it's a kind of institution responsibility, the, the thing we are speaking right now. And, and for sure, I have some doubt on my own practice. Should I take the plane to go to China to see that people and so on? But in some ways, I mean, stories need to, to be told. So I, I'm trying to tell stories about, about it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Th Thomas, I wanted to uh, ask you something. Um, did you know that, because it was very interesting what you were mentioning before, because Gropius Bar was not built as, as an exhibition space, it was built as an academy with ateliers for artists as well, and part that, part academy, part um, ateliers or studios, and part exhibition space. So um, something went wrong along the way, you know, because what, what you did with the building was 
basically the idea, the first idea of the building to create art and to teach art and then to showcase art in the same building. And I find that very interesting that now it's not even possible to do so because the climate control, uh, you know, uh, works over all floors and everything. Um, but but it's, it's actually quite interesting that you, that you discovered the real meaning of the building once again, you know. Uh, thank you for this uh, nice um, interpretation of our uh, history um, and uh, DNA as a building. Uh, I think uh, we did, uh, in fact, something very different. Uh, we stopped cleaning the building. We stopped uh, uh, following the rules of um, an opposite system of uh, objects and species and uh, um, clear separation. Um, so this is something that was not in the DNA of the building. Uh, it's, I think what we did is um, we tried for some weeks uh, to create an offer that is um, inhabited in this building to experience something that is also for Pauline uh, um, very important in her work, uh, in her work uh, to make experiences on several levels on the same time. You can go to a workshop, you can go uh, and see an artwork, but at the same time you can also practice something. So we built up with the audience a tiny house or involve them in the creation of uh, a repair cafe. And uh, so uh, this is all, these are all things uh, who could be offered by institutions like ours. Mm -hmm. They are not built for that but they can contain it, they can uh, start to rethink um, the practices they are inhabiting. And uh, I think uh, this uh, is also a part of uh, what kind of change can we make with infrastructures like this. Uh, what kind of encounters uh, we can offer um, to a certain kind of new knowledge or very old knowledge. Um, this is also for me how I understood uh, the Critical Zone uh, exhibition because the idea of Critical Zone is really, in a way, revolutionary. If you understood what they really deal about or what, what they're really dealing with, the subject they are dealing with, you're really surprised and everything is changing in your mind if, if you look on, on Earth and on your own practice. And this is something you can use the tool of the institution to make this kind of mind shift. So this is something that is for me important if I uh, think about sustainability and uh, what what is possible in a building like the Kropius Bau, I would say this should be possible. Changing the mind, changing, uh, offering different kind of practicing and understanding. Mm -hmm. So probably when we were speaking about this um, exhibition, Critical Zones, Pauline, you took part in it. And um, what I find with the Down to Earth uh, exhibition very interesting is how like, the theme also becomes the form somehow of the, of, of, of the very project. And uh, I was uh, wondering if we look at this exhibition, which um, has uh, like... I mean, it's a really a, a proposal to see, to see things differently. Probably you can also say some words about the framework or the concept. But also um, when it came to the, to the very making, because now today we are focusing on really produ production and presentation. Um, how was your experience? Uh, how were, um, yeah, the, the, were there any regulations such as uh, Thomas described with... Uh, connection to the down to earth or was it like really mainly focusing on the topic on the subject uh, actually it takes uh, place exactly with the pandemic uh, beginnings so it was in march uh, the the starting of the of the installation and so on so we didn't have the exact possibility to do exactly what we wanted to uh, I mean, for the artist part, um, but the institution and so on, they, they did lots of work, like 
experimentation, workshop, and so on to, to, make, to make it alive in a way, because the whole exhibition is, is about description and how, how do we see our own environment and our own world. And so it's given some tools to, to see differently. And, and the way, the way you, you can, it's, a, it's, it's kind of exhibition, you have to stay two or three days to, to, to take all the, the, the tools it gives. And it really follows the, the Bruno Latour uh, thought. So it, it's like, it's, all, it's plastic, but it's also scientist, and you can have some, yeah, some lots of, of different tools to, to, to work in a way. Like, it's, it's an exhibition that requires to, to be involved as a visitor. So my, my own experience was a bit like, uh, didn't happen because I wasn't there because of the, so we, we, did, uh, we did all by Zoom and so on. So it was quite of not so, yeah, not so fun in a way, but uh, the Z cam has lots of yeah different digital tools and so on. So it was a bit the beginning of that kind of uh, of show, also in digital hybrid forms and so on. So I guess the the the, the exhibition before Reset Modernity, which was also in Z cam with, with Bruno, was was maybe a more playful happiness time. So in a way, like everybody will, was together and so on. In this, in those times, it was a bit difficult to be all together. So yeah, we tried to, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, probably one question before we also open. Um, I thought it's, uh, you said before, Pauline, that uh, also in an institutional responsibility to, to kind of um, establish the frameworks and um, the, the basics to also enable artists and contributors and so on to, to produce in an environmentally, environmentally sustainable way. And um, at the same time, I think, uh, and that's a question for, for Stefan also, um, I think it's also very good to be informed as like individuals who are approaching other institutions and so on. And I was wondering if um, if there is any if it comes to kind of reduce the, what we um, ask an institution, um, we reduce it to one point. Is there any data or something that um, about energy? Consum um, energy consumption and emissions, for example, an uh, exhibition, and then compared, like, I don't know, a historical um, traveling exhibition to a contemporary art exhibition. Is there anything like this? And if there is, um, if it was to only kind of change one thing or ask for one thing, what is there any, any um, hints to what would be the most effective thing to do? If we think it back to really like the individual um, possibilities also when working in this field. Is there any thing you could say about this? I can, <laughs> yes. Um, you know, w what I said in the beginning is, is mainly the building, uh, but it's also the, the operations. Uh, when it comes to the building, it's, it's a little different, so you, you, have, you have to have different goals than, than with your daily operation. Um, but I think you have to do both. You have to think about the buildings and to reduce, uh, reduce the energy of the buildings. For example, what Thomas said, very nice, um, not every exhibition room needs the same climate control. You know, you can also have maybe one part of the museum that has total climate control, but another part of the museum doesn't because it doesn't need it. You know, it's cultural or whatever work you show, videos or something. So why? control the entire building, these kind of things, you have to really think ahead and, and, and plan and construct differently. Uh, also, the depots, the archives, um, it's, it's madness what we do right now. You mm. know, we, we collect more and more and more and more, and it, it, it will kill you, you know, and it will kill all of us <laughs> at the end of the day. And also with the day-by-day -day, um, operations. I would also suggest, you know, not to wait too long. You know, we have to be very concrete about it. We have to be very straight about it, because Europe wants to become the first um, zero-emission continent in the world. And um, it's not 
that one part of our society can leave it to, to, to the others, to the rest of us. It's, it's not happening. Everybody has to contribute. And culture uh, 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 has to contribute even more because they want to be on the forefront. They want to have to work with, uh, uh, with artists like Pauline who think a lot about sustainability. But the institutions, they don't do anything about it. And that's not, you know, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't work in, in, in my world, you know. So we have to be very straight what our goals are and then, you know, follow. Um, for example, um, Google, Amazon, um, uh, uh, Apple, they all said we will be by zero emission, uh, zero neutral by 2030 how these big companies can pretend something like that, and I, I believe them, they will, they will get there, they will get there, you will see. But we as art institutions, we think like, oh, that's not really uh, uh, our concern, but it is our concern, it really is, you know, so we have to do, we have to do something. For example, if a museum or an opera house would be open to the audience and say, look, you can either buy a regular ticket or you can buy a green ticket. If you buy the green ticket, we, we are obliged to, for example, uh, present uh, an exhibition, a zero emission exhibition or a zero, uh, zero emission um, uh, play at the, at the theater or something like that, that the audience can decide how the art institution or the cultural institution has to do their jobs, you know. And I think that's very important that we, we, we get involved and that we, 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 we not only ask, we, we actually make them do it, you know. Things like that. I have to tell you, I really think we will have to move very quickly all of a sudden because all the, the, the larger companies, they have, they, they have um, uh, concepts of sustainability. So when they finance, and culture, is, culture and the art world is highly financed <laughs> by, by, by third parties, and they will actually put their money where there is a sustainable label on it or a sustainable concept behind it. So they will not longer, I mean, Hauser and Wirth, we know it, and, and other um, galleries, they start thinking about it right now because if I'm willing to pay mm -hmm. two or three million for, 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 for an artwork, I really want to be sure that the art gallery um, uh, provides this artwork in the most sustainable way they can. Things like that, you know. So. Um, this will be a major change and it will come very quickly. I'm, I'm very convinced of it. And you, you see England is probably the only country who, who does it really in a systemic way. Um, Germany, they, it depends now on the, on, on, on the election, but when it comes to uh, a more greener um, or a green uh, Bundespräsident, we will see that there will be changes mm. also in the cultural field. And it's uh, probably also something which, I mean, you've mentioned a couple of, uh, of keywords. One is certainly money. <laughs> if uh, funding is, is kind of connected to, um, to certain regulations and so on, this might change something. Then the audience, which, uh, which is probably also becoming younger and uh, like so much is also coming from, from young people. I think this question of generation is, is also a very, very interesting topic. And um, yeah, also cultural policy. I mean, if there are like these labels which are, you have for almost everything in, in the cultural field, and, and uh, so it's probably really also the time to have a, a label for, for a sustainable um, institutions. So. But I think it's also a good time to open the discussion because uh, we have these experts here. So um, please. Speak up, please tell us your questions. Also. Otherwise, I have a question <laughs> to start with. Um, thanks um, to all of you. Um, it's, it's very interesting. And uh, I'm really happy as um, a living boy that uh, we started a discussion with you. Uh, 
What I was um, wanted to ask also uh, Stefan and also the others is, um, I mean, times have really changed, especially with, with the pandemic situation. I mean, uh, Thomas, when you planned the exhibition, that was, I guess, in 2018. So there was, you know, everyone was still traveling and then the pandemic hit, you know, all of us, we had to stay. So I think it's a really important time because we really were all... Um, forced to stay and, and think about what can we do now because life goes on and we want to see art, we want... So I think it's, it's a very important moment to really uh, take action. And Stefan, I was wondering, you know, like, um, we all have to do something now. The question is just, should everyone do it by himself or the institution or what does it require? I mean... Um, also being here is like having an exchange, you know, I mean, if every institution creates new rules, what they want to do, does that make sense or does we need like, um, do we need like a coalition or do we need like um, a network or a group? I mean, because it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to do and um, it's not always fun, but if you do it together, um, yeah, what do you think? I mean, yeah, so that's the question. Totally. I, I mean, you said it all. Um, we have to network and we have to build a co coalition and, and set, set straight goals. And, 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 uh, and we have to start today, you know. And, and I think the art institutions and, and uh, cultural institutions uh, have more power than they think they have, <laughs> really. And I cannot believe that they're everybody's waiting, the cultural, the cultural politics, every level is waiting, uh, everybody thinks, oh, they should move first. Uh, no, <laughs> we should move now and, and together. And if Leuvenbroi starts, I'm willing to support and we'll bring all the people on one table and start discussion. We had uh, on 27th of, of uh, May, we had a round table with Monika Grütis in Germany with all the museums and the, the top cultural agencies, so, so to speak, and, and it's, it's, it's going to, you know, the, they, they do now really one step after another, and they have this, this, this network um, um, for culture and media, which really works quite nicely, so they share a lot of knowledge. And, and they started now with this, with this uh, Theo Zweirechner, uh, which is really good. So every institution can measure their own um, uh, impact and, and their emissions. And, and because it has to be comparable, you know, it, it's, it makes no sense if, if everybody goes its, its own way. So we have to find out, you know, what we can do together and share knowledge. We need an, a lot of know-how. We need also technical know-how a lot and, and, and things like that. So we need, we need expertise. But you know, um, we could we could easily now work with with, with the German network and have 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 uh, uh, one branch here in Switzerland. It will be more than willing to to share their knowledge with us because it's it's a little bit like a pandemic. You know, we only win when everybody does something. You know, if if Germany is is on zero emissions, but everybody else isn't. That doesn't help, you know. So uh, I think that's maybe something we could learn from the pandemic. We have it. We have to get there all together, you know. Uh, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, but I'm seriously. I I I am very open, and I, I was talking to Hedy Graber as well, and I tried also to get in contact with Isabel Chasso. I don't know what her problem is right now, and we need funding. I will talk to Andrew Holland with Mercator and and, and other people that we have. A little bit of something just to organize us and to to you know have the meetings and then and and, and then start. It's it's a lot of best practice. Uh, it's it's a lot of fantastic inputs by Thomas. I I, I I love I love this this exhibition so much because it's it's it it will also it, uh, there's a lot of talk in Germany right now about the artistic freedom you know of of, of museums and curators and whatnot. It has, it has nothing to do with that, you know. It's, it's, it's just a different approach, you know. And, uh, and, and Thomas said it more than right, you know. I, and and it's, it's crazy because a lot, of, a lot of artists like Pauline totally willing to contribute. I know that, you know. Thomas, would you 
like to add something to that because I mean you did this particular exhibition which um, yeah as we discussed which all about it but you're certainly working on your next projects so um, if you could probably tell us also what was the like what will you kind of um, definitely implement from now on always is there something that you really think um, follow up so it's it's also like what I mean we should do this project but also what are the the, the effects of it what um, yeah honestly uh, this whole environmental question is not uh, the, the the onlyest question in my work uh, and I, hope so. uh, I learned that it's a basic question uh, but uh, I have to confess that what I'm doing is in 80% following the artists. So uh, also the impact of the, uh, 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 by um, Tino Sega, for example, in the creation process of concept of this exhibition was very, very high. And uh, I think uh, what I learned from this is uh, that it's so urgent to avoid to create again products. Because this is uh, very often what we do in our uh, uh, daily routine uh, and uh, so I think we have to try to create new framings for our work and that empowers different kind, kinds of knowledge. If I listen to Pauline uh, Julie's work, it's always in the same time creating different kinds of knowledge practices and uh, uh, so um, this is a uh, this is really something I have no answer how to do it, but I know that a word like esoteric, it was a very bad, ugly word in the last years, but it becomes more interesting because it's a different concept of knowledge, practice, and understanding, uh, different powers, different ways of embedding something in uh, situations and networks who are not the usual way we uh, embedding things. Uh, and so I think it's, uh, it's the rethinking of the model of institutions itself and uh, to de-institutionalize institutions in a way. This is uh, something urgent and there is no recipe for that. There is nothing I can give as a kind of uh, rule. But I know this, this is the, the basic question. And uh, to st stop, um, like uh, uh, Pauline said in the beginning, stop this thinking in making objects, uh, extractions. Uh, it's, it's the beginning of learning what is the real problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a long-term process. And I think we have to find surprising ways to go on this way and you can't all, you can't always name it like this to be to be honest you have for example my next project um, that is all like always a project of a group of people not only of mine is a project uh, of a, a big corona exorcism we have to clean ourselves from this experience and all this fear and all this and we have to find a way uh, as an institution to make a different offer of experience uh, in dealing with a thing like that. So, no answer, but in a way, okay, some okay. thoughts. But, but maybe yeah, just, first, just, yeah, just yeah. for institution, I, I guess working together with scientists, with university and so on, because for example, in, in VD and in Lausanne, in the theater, they are, uh, for two years now, they are trying in, inside the institution to think of how, how, for example, sending an email, how does it cost, or, and something like uh, at the coffee machine, and so on. So, like, thinking made that maybe the cultural institutions are more, so, more or less the same as, I don't know, a school or something. Like, we are all together trying to to do better and, and maybe take some example or I guess it's what you do but with university also or I don't know when you say the data where where can we found it or something there is lots of people working on especially in Switzerland and just maybe 
having different perspective helps. It's, it's very true what, what Pauline and Thomas said, and uh, you can read it up at uh, Julie's Bicycle. Uh, it's this British uh, charity who, uh, who do this um, sustainable, environmental sustainable work uh, in, in the cultural field, and they, they found out or they learned about uh, recent uh, creative climate trends, which are seven, and one is uh, artworks. You see it really in artworks. Uh, you see it in design and innovation, so there is new things coming up. There is collaboration, as you mentioned. Um, there is a lot of policy changing going on as well, pathfinding, uh, organizational leadership. That's more my field where I try to change uh, things. And there's also an activism. Uh, amongst uh, artists and, and amongst the cultural field. And that's not something they just talk about, that's what they really learn and, 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 uh, on surveys and, 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 and uh, in different countries, uh, mm -hmm. what's worldwide going on. So there's, there's a lot of hope, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of change, there's a lot of things going on already. Uh, but we just have to look at it and, and pick it up and, mm -hmm. and do something with it. Mm -hmm. Is there a one last question? So uh, then that was the <laughs> Stichwort. <laughs> there is a lot that uh, we can look at and uh, do our um, work and our research and then continue doing on it. I, I found it very interesting to also kind of bring together these um, different perspectives. And um, yeah, so thank you very much for uh, joining. Also, thank you very much for coming this uh, very nice and warm summer evening. So uh, thank you. Thank you.